So two weeks ago, we lost a turkey and a rooster right here in this flock to some kind of predator. Okay, this is a mess out here. We're in the turkey yard and there's feathers everywhere. Looks like we lost our female turkey and our Brahma rooster in here. We have electric here now that's tied in to this fence. But at that time, we did not have electric to this yard. We had it to all the surrounding yards and we didn't think that a predator would go past those yards and think to check this fence. And sure enough, they did because a couple nights later, look what we found on the camera at the turkey house. That's right, a coyote came right up to their door. And that's why we were tough on our son, Eli, when he didn't happen to go in and check and make sure that the female turkey and the rooster were in that night because they were out and that coyote must have just came right up and got them. It's partially our fault as well. If that fence had been electrified, maybe the coyote wouldn't have come in, but it doesn't stop them with electric too. We've got electric right here at our ducks that are right here by the pond. And just a day after the turkey and the rooster were eaten and taken away, we found a duck right here in the fence. They have electric fence. One of the hookbill females got killed. Now we were a little confused on what might have happened that night, but afterwards, I was pretty sure that whatever it was, was chasing them around the fence. May not have actually gone in the fence. Somehow spooked the duck, the female duck, up enough to come right here at the edge of this and was able to grab the neck. Was trying to pull the duck through the fence, ended up pulling the whole fence down as it was trying to drag it. And then I think was shocked by the fence and then ran off. And so it left the entire duck and didn't eat any of it, just happened to kill it. So while Becky and I were out walking, we happened to come across all these feathers out here. This is from the female turkey. It's about 200 yards away from the turkey pen. And so we were able to tell, okay, they killed the turkey. They dragged it all the way out to this spot where they ate it. And then they went back into the woods. And so we knew this was one route that the predator was going. And at that time we hadn't found the Brahma. So right over here, lots of black feathers. So this is from our Brahma rooster that the predator ended up getting, but it's a different route than the turkey. So turkey was back that way. And then this was this way. So my thinking was coyote took it back to that spot. Something else was in the area and came and took the Brahma over this way. Now maybe the coyote took it that way, ate it, then came back and got the rooster and ate it over here, maybe. But it started to make us think, maybe there's two predators out here. So we started to set up two traps for the routes that they came in. One down here on the west side, that, that big tree right there. And then in the back, we set up another tree. Let me show you what we use. So this is where we put the duck that was killed by the predator. And these traps will work great for raccoons, possums, skunks. They'll get the animal, they'll step on the, the pad and the door will close. We've caught a lot of predators in those. But something tried to dig here on the outside. So I think this might have been a coyote or something else that was really smart. Maybe it didn't even fit inside this, but tried to dig underneath and find a way in without actually going in the trap. It tried to dig and it gave up. And then we've used this hand trap before. This has worked really good for raccoons and possums. We put this down by the pond ducks a couple years ago. We ended up catching a possum down there right after uh, Green Lantern and some of the other ducks were attacked. This one's really hard to do by hand, but it's got a tool that you can push this in. You can push this inward and then have that down. And then when it is set off, when something goes in Inside there to eat some dog food or whatever you put down there. When they set the trigger off, this pulls out and then it holds their hand, their paw, right inside of there. This one's safe enough to use around cats and dogs typically. They won't go in there for this food. We felt safe enough with this right outside the animal's pen. But for coyotes, we needed something much larger. And this trap, these push down, these push out. This one is now set scared holding it so when something touches on the middle not gonna do it it will collapse and hold their paw in and it has a really tight grip they're not coming out of that all right we set a trap for the coyote we're gonna check it it died recently we've got a trap down below so we set that up last week and then look what we caught a couple days later so we put a trap here in the back of the yard have a camera on it and we just we didn't catch a coyote, but we got a fox. Seems 
So on this farm, we can't have predators like this. So we're gonna have to dispatch this fox and reset the trap again, because I think there's some coyotes that we still need to catch out here. It's a very pretty fox though. So it was very unexpected to see a red fox out here. We were still hoping to catch a coyote. And then a couple days later, we caught an animal that I really didn't expect to see up close in my lifetime. Have you ever seen a bobcat before? No. I know, I don't think I have either. Let's go look. He's pretty wild. So this bobcat is really angry. <laughs> a lot more aggressive than the fox we caught the other day. What's it look like? Uh. Kind of looks like a big cat, doesn't it? Like a yeah. little, or a little tiger? Yeah, a little tiger mixed with a cat. Yeah. So Becky thought we should call our local conservation department to see what to do with it. If they would want to rehome it, we are we are not equipped to be able to handle a, a bobcat like this. It's going to be so aggressive if we went up to it alive in that trap. So we're checking with the conservation department to see if they want to do something with it. Otherwise, we're going to have to... Oh, careful, careful. Otherwise, we're gonna have to dispatch it, this bobcat. It's a lion cat. It's a bobcat. Bobcat. Yeah. It's scary, isn't it? Yeah. Looks like a little tiger. Yeah. Me and Lou, not the little mom. Looks like a little bigger than a cat. Yeah. I it's, feel like. It's pretty scary when we got up close to it. Wildcat would got got a duck. That's a possibility. We have no idea what got out there. But we just have the coyote on camera, so we have no idea if it was him or this guy. Or the fox. Yeah. No, I thought the bobcat ate the turkey. Really? Yeah. Yeah, but the coyote was in the yard, was in the turkey yard. Yeah, he had a taste of it. Yeah. So he exactly. definitely got him initially but then two you know there were two areas there was a feathers down over there and then there were feathers down over there so there were two animals that took the bodies two different ways So I've contacted our local Department of Conservation, asked them what we're supposed to do. One, they said, if you are having predator issues and they are killing your, your animals, that you're legally allowed to, to trap them. They did say normally that they want to know if you're setting up traps. They said right now that I'm legally allowed to trap coyotes until April 14th here in Missouri. So they said, I'm, I'm good till then to keep my traps out anytime after that, that they would want to know about it. So there's a certain time of the year, which is, it's mostly in winter. Um, you can look up dates for your state, but basically said, I'm, I'm allowed to trap coyotes until then. After that, I'd have to let them know if I was setting up traps on our property. They said they don't have any need or want to come out and, and take the bobcat for any reason. Um, if I was... I think I have to buy a permit if I was wanting to do something with the fur, if I was actually wanting to sell it for the fur. They said I'm good to to dispatch the bobcat. They said I can keep the traps out and so we can continue on our hunt for a coyote or whatever's getting our, our turkeys and our chickens and our ducks. I'll tell you when it comes to taking an animal's life, it's never easy and it's not something I enjoy and not something that I hope that you have to deal with or go through it all, but when it comes down to 
us or our animals. And the predator pressure has been relentless lately that with these coyotes and foxes and bobcats and whatever else is out here that, you know, when it comes down to it, it's, it's them or us. But at the point that we trap an animal, there's no way to safely get in there and, and let it out without being very severely injured. And so really at this point, the only thing we can do is take the life of the predator. Man, I'll tell you what, even when I know the animal's dead, I still don't trust it. It's scary. Sheesh, what if I didn't, what if it's still alive? So we've had these square bales here stacked behind our barn for since last fall when they were cut. And we put some in our cow barn, but we've used them all up. We give them about a one square bale a day, plus they get a big round bale out that they'll take them a few weeks to get through. We're all out of square bales. So we need to grab these, load them up, take them out to the cow barn. But this is our storage so we can keep them protected from the weather. Big tarp over it, works out pretty well every year. I'm just gonna keep filming while you work, oh, okay? <laughs> just kidding. Looks good. Good job, Becky. You tired? Yes. All right. It's my face red. Yes. Yeah. We'll get a big bale out for the cows next, but hopefully all these square bales that'll last us to somewhere in the summer before we're reloaded with more square bales this fall. Let's get a little closer to the hay, and then we can just drop it over. There we go. There you go, Dolly. All right. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> so we still haven't caught our coyote. We've got two weeks left to legally catch a coyote with traps. And then we would have to make sure we're advising our local conservation department officers to if we're going to continue doing that and becky really wants to take the traps down we don't want to keep messing with the edge of where the wildlife comes in and out we're really just trying to catch the predators that are coming for our birds and there's not an easy spot to set that up we put it too close to the birds joey or one of our cats might get caught in it we don't want that but we haven't caught the coyote on camera ever since it came all the way up to the house so Maybe it's smart enough to know now that it won't get anything or it's just gonna spot check every once in a while. So we've got the electric on there now. We've got cameras set up on their yard and at the border, but we're still having some issues with what the predator attacks did. We've got a duck that's being bullied. And I think it stems back to when the predator killed our female duck and set off the balance of our duck yard. So this is Captain Junior. The last couple of years, we've had our hook-billed ducks down at the pond. We still do have them down there, but we've had a few more, and our original one to hatch out was Captain. She was the leader of all of our hook bills and the one we used for breeding because she had really good genetics. She had a really good curve on her beak. And this is her son, Captain Junior. She ended up dying when she was out on the pond and we would have predators come and get them at night. And so we've kept them inside a net but some of our males have picked on get the water? Captain Junior here. He's having a rough time. He's had his, nope. the back of his neck has been a little exposed. He's pretty weak. Feels like he has barely any weight to him. I don't think the other ducks were letting him eat or drink very much. I'm gonna use some blue coat on here. And then we're gonna put him in with a couple of our other chickens that are 
in our medical area. We're still trying to help our Australorp overcome her breathing issues. And then we have one other that has a little issue on her backside. How's it going? Good. What are you doing today? Um, playing. Okay. So while the predators didn't have anything to do specifically with Captain Junior's injuries, but it was caused by them because whoever killed the one duck down there, if it was a coyote, a fox, a, a bobcat, it was a female, and it threw our numbers out of balance and made us have too many males in there, and then the two hookbill males started teaming up on junior and that's where we're at we've got too many male ducks and too many predators and so it's just a problem with keeping everything balanced out You are so weird.